Okay. All right, Garen. So you mentioned that um, your your menstrual cycle is late. It's usually, you know, day day 30 and it's day 35. Yeah, actually I am used to having more of like a 28 day cycle and it does vary. Um, but I am now on day 35 and I think that I might be on day one given my signs and symptoms I've been spotting, but I can feel cramps building today. And um, as you know, I have a history of really, really painful periods. So that's something that I would love to be able to work on today. Okay, right. And so just, um, just no, when did um, these painful periods begin? Like how long have you been? I've been it? dealing with severe cramping um, and severe fatigue with my periods since I was 24 and I'm turning 30 next month. So it's been about six years. Okay. So before yeah. then your, your periods, your menstrual cycles weren't terrible or bad? They've kind of always been a, um, a problematic like thing in my life. Um, when I was 14, that's when I started my period, I had really, really heavy flow and um, conventional healthcare. I was immediately put on birth control and I stayed on it for a really long time. Um, I'd say like seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. And my periods were predictable and easy, but um, I kind of felt like not myself kind of felt like an emotional psychopath. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so from there, it was just kind of this um, irregular period for years. And then, yeah, around age 24, there was also um, a difficult emotional incident, the death of a friend. Um, but there also is like a genetic pattern of difficult reproductive health for the women in my family. So my sister also has very painful periods. My grandma did. My grandma and her two daughters, which are my aunt and mom, they all had hysterectomies um, for I think like bleed, bleed or like uterine bleeding. So there's, there's some history there. Okay, right. And that um, you mentioned that there was a death of a friend around 20, 24 years old. Is that when that happened? Yeah, that year, the, like, I was, I'm a massage therapist, and that, I was giving a massage, and out of nowhere, all of a sudden, I just had, like, crippling cramps, and since that cycle, it's been the same ever since. Mm, okay. Okay. Do you think that it has any, any correlation with um, that experience that you had in losing a friend? Has that ever been a connection that you've made? Or I, an awareness. I think it is. Yeah, I do kind of attribute um, the difficult periods with kind of like underlying emotions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going back to Chinese medicine, maybe like some liver involvement, some lung and grief involvement, all kinds of um, factors that could be leading to stagnation. Uh, I can't say that I understand it. It's one of the bigger like projects in my life or karmas, whatever you want to call it. So I don't have a full understanding of it, but I do think there's emotional underpinnings. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and I've seen a lot of different types of, like I've seen a naturopath for it. I've tried MDs for it. Um, MDs want to put me on birth control and I'm not for that. And then naturopaths, you know, we've looked at my estrogen and my progesterone levels and they are low, but even after about you know, six months to a year of consistent care there, I haven't really seen improvements. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so um, because you've experienced, you know, both, both like easier types of periods where they haven't been as painful, and then you've experienced the really, the heavy, the painful ones, is there, um, and you've experienced the painful ones for maybe the equal amount of time that you've experienced non-painful. Mm -hmm. So is there any, um, like when you think about the possibility of not having a painful period, how possible does that feel to you? Mm. It's really interesting. Like my, my like heart lights up with like the hope of it, but then there's like this immediate dash of like, well, I don't know if that's possible actually. And I, there is this like sense of hopelessness that I, I have towards it where it's like, well, I've tried everything. Mm. Yeah. And um, how intense is that sense of hopelessness that I've tried everything? Zero to 10. I'd say it's like a six or a seven. Mm -hmm. 
And is there an emotion with that? For sure. Like there's even like a, like an upwelling, like in my, like a little bit of like a, my throat gets a little choked up. Like it's just a bit of like a hopelessness and a, mm-hmm. a sadness, a frustration. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start tapping. Okay, Kieran. Okay. Okay. All right. So go ahead and start tapping on the side of the hand. And Kieran, this is your session, so the power of EFT lies in the ability to use the client's words. So if I say something that doesn't sound true, you want to say it in a different way, or something else comes up, just let me know, okay? This is your session. Okay, all right. So go ahead and take a deep breath here. And just feel your feet on the ground. Just drop in. And go ahead and repeat after me. Even though... Even though I'm feeling the sense of hopelessness, I'm feeling the sense of hopelessness. My throat is getting choked up. My throat is getting choked up because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. I've seen MDs and NDs. I've seen MDs and NDs. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And even though. And even though. Just thinking of the possibility that I couldn't, I, that I could not have a painful period. Just thinking of the possibility that I could not have a painful period. I feel this sense of hopelessness. I feel this sense of hopelessness. Because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. And I can feel this in my throat. And I can feel this in my throat. Like an upwelling. Like an upwelling. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling. And even though, and even though, I'm feeling the sense of hopelessness. I'm feeling this sense of hopelessness. Because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. I've seen medical doctors and naturopaths. I've seen medical doctors and naturopaths and acupuncturists. And acupuncturists, yeah. And I can feel this all in my throat. And I can feel this all in my throat. And I accept that right here and right now, this is what I'm feeling. And I accept that right here and right now, this is what I'm feeling. Top of the head. This sense of hopelessness. This sense of hopelessness. Eyebrow. This sense of hopelessness. This sense of hopelessness. Side of the eye. I can feel it in my throat. I can feel it in my throat. Because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. This sense of hopelessness. This sense of hopelessness. I can feel it in my throat. I can feel it in my throat. Collarbone. Take a deep breath here, Kieran. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. <clears throat> Under the arm. I've tried everything. I've tried everything. Okay. And go ahead and relax and take a deep breath. And just notice if that that sense of hopelessness that was a six or a seven before, has that gone up, down, or stayed the same? I think the feeling in my body, which was this like sinking, um, is more like a four now. Okay. Okay. So you describe that sense of hopelessness as like a sinking feeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because like that, the hope was like almost like an upwelling in my heart of like hope. Oh, Matched gotcha. with like, this, like sinking down, like towards. Oh, the most. gotcha. So the sinking feeling. Okay, and you said that that's that sinking feeling, that hopelessness is like a four. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And do you feel that sinking feeling anywhere in particular in your body when you tune in? It's like from my solar plexus, like down towards like. The lower jaw, like so, uterus and low back, sacral region. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there anything else that you're aware of, of that sinking feeling? Does it have a particular color, any other characteristics as you're tuning in? um, It's kind of, it's like dense and like drippy. Mm -hmm. Like goopy almost. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So side of the hand. Even though. Even though. 
I'm feeling this sinking feeling. I'm feeling this sinking feeling. The sense of hopelessness. The sense of hopelessness. Just at the thought of possibly not having a painful period. Just at the thought of possibly not having a painful period. I can feel it from my solar plexus to the sacral region. I can feel it from my solar plexus to the sacral region. It's this dense, drippy, goopy feeling. It's this dense, drippy, goopy feeling. And right here, right now, I'm okay. And right here, right now, I'm okay. And even though I'm feeling this sinking feeling of hopelessness. And even though I'm feeling this sinking feeling of hopelessness. Because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. And I can feel it from my solar plexus to my sacral region. And I can feel it from my solar plexus to my sacral region. It's dense and drippy and goopy. It's dense and drippy and goopy. And all I have to do is notice. And all I have to do is notice. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling right now. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling right now. And even though I'm just tuning into the sinking feeling of hopelessness. And even though I'm just tuning into this sinking feeling of hopelessness. I can feel it in my solar plexus down to my sacral region. I can feel it in my solar plexus down to my sacral region. All I have to do right now is notice. All I have to do right now is notice. Okay, top of the head. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. Eyebrow. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. I can feel it from my solar plexus to my sacral region. I can feel it from my solar plexus to my sacral region. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. This hopelessness in my solar plexus down to my sacral region. This hopelessness in my solar plexus down to my sacral region. It's drippy and goopy. It's drippy and goopy. All I have to do is notice. All I have to do is notice. This hopelessness. This hopelessness. Because I've tried everything. Because I've tried everything. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And just notice if that hopelessness, that feeling, that sinking feeling, did that change at all from a four? Did it go up, down, stay the same? Um, I think it is still diminishing. I, um, I decided not to take any painkillers before this session because I just wanted to see what influence it could have. Um, but there is like a bit of a building um, low back pain that is characteristic of day one of my period. Mm -hmm. So I am feeling that, but um, as far as like the sinking and the goopiness, that does seem to be getting lighter. Okay, right. So just thinking about the possibility of potentially not having a painful period anymore. How possible does that feel on a scale of zero to 100%, 100% being, yes, it's completely possible? It's just so interesting because there's this part of me that's like, it's totally possible, 100%. But there's still this other part of me that's like, mm, no. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. And which part is, is stronger, you think? Hmm. I don't like admitting it, but I think the hopelessness might be stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how um, this possibility of not having a painful period, zero to 100%, how possible does that feel given those two parts interacting? I mean, for the, for the half of me that thinks it's possible, that half thinks it's 100% possible. Mm -hmm. And what about the other half? How possible does that half thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, equal but opposite. <laughs> so yeah, not possible. Okay. Because why? Um, because for one, it feels like I've tried everything. And for another, it feels like maybe, maybe the maybe I don't have what it takes. Maybe there's some amount of like discipline in a practice or maybe there's some amount of emotional, uh, oh, like maybe I can't overcome 
the emotions that create this. Maybe there's something that I, I can't do it. I'm incapable of it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you think that you could be doing now, you know, throughout the month, preparing for your cycles that you think that maybe could potentially help you, but you haven't um, been doing it, haven't been committed to it? Is there if anything? you think so, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many um, approaches. Mm -hmm. So as far as Chinese medicine, I could be incorporating herbal formulas, um, given what phase of my period I'm in. So every week I could be on a new formula to be moving blood and um, other things too, building blood and moving it. Mm -hmm. um, there's seed cycling that naturopaths have recommended to me. So, you know, you, for your luteal phase, you um, use a type of seed for uh, upping progesterone and then during follicular, it's for estrogen, maybe something like that. So there's these things that I could be doing. More exercise is always important, I think. Um, meditative practices. Um, and, you know, I've, in the six years that I've been dealing with this, I've tried all of that. Um, how consistent I've been, you know, with being a grad student and now opening my own business, like it can be hard to be consistent. So consistency, I think, is a challenge. Um, okay. But, sure. Consistency. Yeah. So of those things that you just mentioned, what is one thing that you would like to be more consistent at? So you can really gauge whether it's affecting you positively. The incorporating herbal formulas, seed cycling, more exercise, or just meditative practices of those, which one are you like, I really want to be more consistent with that? Yeah, the one that I think has been popping up for me for months, if not years, is I really want to develop more discipline around breath work. Breath work. Okay. Yeah. So tell me a bit about what your relationship is with breath work now. Like, um, where are you at and where would you like to be ideally? So where I'm at right now is mostly just having theoretical background in breath work from my yoga trainings. My mom is a, a breath work teacher. Um, so I have a lot of theory. Um, mm -hmm. how often am I practicing though? Not nearly often enough. Um, so I'll get into grooves where like, I'll do it for a night and a morning and that night. And like, maybe I'll have like three days and I'm like, but this was supposed to be the year, but I did it every day. It's like, okay, well I got three days checked off and then I fall off. Um, so I, I do feel like it's, I'm closest to regularity than I've ever been because it's on my mind a lot. And I at least can like go to like five second inhales and five second exhales when I'm feeling anxious or something, or I'll wake up in the morning and like have that remembrance like, oh yeah, I want to do alternate nostril breathing today. Or the other difficulty is that when I PMS, I can't exercise as much because different parts of my body kind of like crap out on me. My joints get achy. So I, I kind of have like a um, more intense workout routine for three weeks or whatever weeks I'm not PMSing, but I've wanted to lean more into breath work when I'm okay. um, yeah. right before my period, because I really believe um, in the power of like a diaphragm to be influencing the pelvic floor and you know my reproductive organs and the power of oxygenation and moving all that chi, like there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I'm more theory than I am practice right now. Okay, right. So um, ideally, um, and let's, let's set a practical goal for you, something measurable, something specific um, that you can believe and you can like truly be like, okay, that is something that I could really do. So um, just think about like the next upcoming week, implementing breath work. How many days ideally would you like to practice? Um, so, I mean, ideally, I would love to be doing it daily. But I'm doing it daily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that feels possible for you to do it daily. It does. Cause you know, there's certain things that I'm like, I'm able to develop consistency around pretty easily. And um, so one of them, for example, I've started doing hot lemon water in the morning and I've actually noticed such an improvement in my complexion. Um, <clears throat> so that's been something. And that's the other thing is that when I start to see um, the results, it's like, Oh yeah, this is why I keep coming back to this. Um, and I do feel that with breath work, but for some reason it's a little more difficult, but, um, but it's almost like if I could link it to like the lemon water, it's like, okay, um, 
do I do it before or after? But like, if you know, if I can tie it to something that I've already developed a habit around, like maybe that would help with the consistency. But yeah, so I'd like to be doing a breathwork practice in the morning and a breathwork practice at night because I'm also someone that kind of struggles with um, bedtime anxiety. Okay. All right. And how long um, in the morning and at night? Um, I mean, as short as like three minutes wouldn't even, I'd be happy with to, you know, mm -hmm. as long as 10 or 15 or longer. Okay. Okay. All right. So just thinking about your, you're starting your breath work commitment tonight. Okay. okay. Idea like just in a, an imaginary scenario, you're starting tonight and you're going till let's see next Tuesday. Okay. And you're doing this twice a day, morning and evening, for anywhere between three minutes to like 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. So just thinking about that, um, being held accountable to that goal just for one week, what is going on in your body or is there any feelings that, you're, that are coming up or any self-talk that you hear in your mind? Just knowing that that's a goal that you want to hit. Um, for the most part, I'm just kind of feeling kind of excited. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's some amount of me that, um, hmm, what is the feeling? There's, I guess, like a little bit of doubt, like, will you do it? <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, is there an emotion with that? Will, will you do it? Mm. Yeah. It's less of an emotion and more of like a, like a, like a feeling of like a sluggish laziness. It's like a meh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And how intense is that? Like, will you really do it? Mm -hmm. Zero to 10. Um, like a three or a four. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So side of the hand. Even though... Even though. Just imagining having a seven-day routine of breath work. Just imagining having a seven-day routine of breath work. Starting tonight. Starting tonight. A part of me thinks, will you really do it? A part of me thinks, will you really do it? It's like this sluggish laziness. It's like this sluggish laziness. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. And even though there's a part of me. And even though there's a part of me. That says, will you really do this? That says, will you really do this? Will you really do this breath work? Will you really do this breath work? Just imagining doing it for the next seven days starting tonight. Just, just imagining doing it for the next seven days starting tonight. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. And even though there's this part of me. And even though there's this part of me. That's saying, will you really do this? That's saying, will you really do this? Will you really commit to seven days of breath work? Will you really commit to seven days of breath work? Just imagining that I'm going to start it tonight. Just imagining that I'm going to start it tonight. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. Top of the head. There's a part of me that's saying, will you really do it? There's a part of me that's saying, will you really do it? Eyebrow. This sluggish laziness. This sluggish laziness. Will you really do it? Will you really do it? Just thinking about doing seven days of breath work. Just thinking about doing seven days of breath work. There's this part of me saying, will you really do it? There's this part of me saying, will you really do it? Will you really do it? Will you really do it? <laughs> and all I have to do is notice. And all I have to do is notice. But there's this part saying, will you really do it? But there's this part saying, will you really do it? Go ahead and take a deep breath. So Karen, what are you aware of now? What are you noticing? There's almost this like, um, like there's a lightheartedness to it. Like that, it's hard to describe. It's like almost like the self-saboteur in this um, regard is almost like a, like a lighthearted one, like a, like it doesn't take it seriously. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And you would, you would like it to take it seriously? Well, you know, you never want to like take anything too seriously, but I think maybe it would be for me as a person, my personality and everything, um, maybe taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Mm. Okay. Taking it more seriously would make it, um, would you mind saying that again, would make it less easy to brush off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that, that part of you that's saying, will you really do it? Is that still with an intensity of about three or four or did that kind of shift for you? Well, it's funny. Cause like it actually, like, I think it increased in, in mocking's not the word, but it increased in like, nah, like in, in playful doubt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And now when you think about taking it more seriously, would it would make it would make it less easy to brush off. Does that at all have an emotion associated with it? I think it has more of this like, hey, like um, there's this sense of uh, like response like responsibility and kind of like taking responsibility for my own health. Mm -hmm. And there's like a seriousness in that, in the sense that like you, I'm responsible for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and start tapping again, even though, even though just imagining starting a seven day routine of breath work tonight, just imagining starting a seven day routine of breath work tonight, there's this playful doubt. There's this playful doubt. Because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. And there's a sense of responsibility. And there's a sense of responsibility. And I accept that I'm feeling this way right now. And I accept that I'm feeling this way right now. And even though. And even though. Just imagining this seven day routine of breath work. Just imagining the seven day routine of breath work. And starting tonight. And starting tonight. There's this playful doubt inside of me. There's this playful doubt inside of me. Because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling. And I accept that this is what I'm feeling. And even though and even though there's this playful doubt, there's this playful doubt, just at the thought of doing a seven day routine of breath work, just at the thought of doing a seven day routine of breath work, I accept myself anyway. I accept myself anyway. Yeah. Top of the head. Taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. There's a sense of responsibility. There's a sense of responsibility. Just thinking about committing to a seven day routine of breath work. Just thinking about committing to a seven day routine of breath work. Taking this more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Taking this more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. And that's why there's this play, playful doubt. And that's why there's this playful doubt. Because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to, easy to brush off because taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Collarbone. Taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. Taking it more seriously would make it less easy to brush off. There's a sense of responsibility. There's a sense of responsibility. Good. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And just notice what that playful doubt is is telling you now is it is the intensity still rising or did it kind of go down it's not still rising mm -hmm. i think it did diminish yeah that um session just now i um did have this kind of like visceral understanding of like the things we were saying i was really embodying what we were saying out loud like yeah that's true 
Mm -hmm. It would make me take it more seriously. It wouldn't be so easy to brush off if I took it more seriously. Gotcha. Okay. So there's more truth to that. Mm -hmm. You're finding. Yeah. So, um, so thinking about starting your breathwork routine tonight and then doing it for seven days, how um, possible does that feel? Like in regards to, will you actually do it? Like, is there still that doubt? Like, will you? Um, the, 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 the doubt that arises is me knowing, uh, knowing how much pain I'm about to be in um, for the next couple of days, like tonight and tomorrow, um, which might be a limiting belief, but just based on experience. Um, mm -hmm. but cause, uh, when my cramps are really bad, I kind of like lose track of my diaphragm and my pelvic floor. I don't know if it's inflammation or what, um, but breath work has so many faces to it. So now I feel like that's an excuse. Like even just counting my breath is still a breath work routine. So okay. I feel realistic. I can do this. Okay. Yeah. So it's feeling more realistic, right? Mm -hmm. It's feeling like more attainable. Um, but you did mention something that I think we could tap on and you're like, oh, maybe it is a limiting belief, you know, maybe it's getting in the way. Um, I, and then that was, I will be in pain for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And because um, I will be in pain for the next couple of days, you won't be able to do, you feel like you won't be able to do the breath work to the extent that you want. Mm hmm yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And how true does that feel? Like I will be in pain for the next couple of days, zero to 10 truth. I won't be able to do the breath work. Um, I mean, like a four, because mm -hmm. the more I think about it, you know, there's, like I said, there's so many ways to practice breath work. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's do some work on that and see where that takes us. Okay. Okay. All right. So side of the hand. Even though. Even though. I'm just imagining starting my seven day breath work, breath work routine tonight. I'm just imagining starting my seven day breath work routine tonight. And a part of me thinks I can't do it because I will be in pain for the next couple days. And a part of me thinks that I can't do it since I'll be in pain for the next few days. I won't be able to do breath work to the extent that I want to. I won't be able to do breath work to the extent that I want to. Does that sum it up for you or you want to say it in a different way? No, I think it's good. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And even though there's a part of me. And even though there's a part of me. That thinks I won't be able to do breath work for the next couple of days because I'll be in pain that thinks I won't be able to do breath work for the next couple of days because I'll be in pain. I accept myself anyway. I accept myself anyway. And even though, and even though there's a part of me that thinks I won't be able to do breath work for the next couple of days because I will be in pain. There's a part of me that thinks I won't be able to do breath work for the next couple of days because I'll be in pain. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. Top of the head. A part of me thinks that I'll be in pain for the next couple of days and I won't be able to do the breath work. A part of me thinks that I'll be in pain for the next couple of days and I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. Side of that, I won't be able to do the breath work because I'll be in pain. I won't be able to do the breath work because I'll be in pain. Under the eye, I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. Because I'll be in pain for the next couple days. Because I'll be in pain for the next couple days. I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. A part of me thinks that I won't be able to do it because I'll be in pain for the next couple of days. A part of me thinks that I won't be able to do the breath work because I'll be in pain for the next couple of days. I won't be able to do the breath work. I won't be able to do the breath work. Go ahead and take a deep breath. So before it was about a four out of 10 true, that statement, I won't be able to do the breath work. 
because of the pain that I'll be in for the next couple of days. How did that change throughout it? That rose. It went up. Uh, yeah, it went up. Because <clears throat> yeah. as we were saying, as I was saying the words, because I'll be in pain, it just, there was a sense of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be in a lot of pain in the next couple of days. Like I'm at that part of my cycle now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it became more true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And so um, you're already starting to feel the beginnings of your cycle. The, you mentioned that there's some, some low back pain that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to change gears a bit here. Um, but before we do that, I just want to um, ask you like any other week. So say you finish your, your cycle, you're done with it. Now it's a new month, week one, and um, you have the ability um, to implement the seven day routine the way that you'd like it without your cycle coming into the mix. And so, um, is there still that thought of like, I won't be able to do the breath work? Not for the pain reason. Um, I think that's where like that, uh, the more doubt comes in, but even that, like it feels way more possible outside of this week. Okay. It feels way more possible. So, um, zero to, or zero to hundred percent on the possibility of implementing seven days, um, like in maybe a week and a half, like after your cycle ends mm -hmm. and doing that consistently. It feels totally possible. Okay. There's no resistance to doing that. Okay. Maybe there's like 10% doubt. <laughs> There's 10% doubt. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and where's that coming from? You think that 10% of doubt, what's feeding that? The history of my inability to commit to this goal. Mm -hmm. How many times before have you tried? Oof. I mean, I've known about breath work for 11 years now and I have never established a regular practice. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's do a bit of work on that and then we'll change gears, okay? So even though, even though there is still this 10% of doubt, there is still this 10% of doubt, when I think of implementing a seven day routine of breath work, when I think of implementing a seven day routine of breath work, starting outside of my cycle, starting outside of my cycle, because I've known about breath work for 11 years, because I've known about breath work for 11 years, and I've never established a regular practice. And I've never established a regular practice. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. And even though I have this 10% of doubt. And even though I have this 10% of doubt. When I think about committing to a seven day routine of breath work. When I think about committing to a seven day routine of breath work. Once my cycle is done. Once my cycle is done. I've known about breath work for 11 years. I've known about breath work for 11 years. But I've never established a regular practice but I've never established a regular practice. And so I have this 10% of doubt. So I have this 10% of doubt. That I can actually do it. That I can actually do it. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. And even though I have this doubt. And even though I have this doubt. That I can actually implement this seven day routine of breath work. That I could actually implement this seven day routine of breath work. I've never actually established a regular practice. I've never actually established a regular practice. And so I have this doubt. And so I have this doubt. And I accept myself anyway. And I accept myself anyway. Top of the head, this doubt. This doubt. I've never been able to establish a regular practice. I've never been able to establish a regular practice. So I have this doubt. So I have this doubt. I've never been able to establish a regular practice of breath work. I've never been able to establish a regular practice of breath work. So I have this 10% of doubt. So I have this 10% of doubt. This doubt. This doubt. This doubt. This doubt. This 10% of doubt. This 10% of doubt. I've never been able to establish a regular practice. I've never been able to establish a regular practice. And so I have this doubt. And so I have this doubt. Good. Gonna take a deep breath. How 
How's that 10% of doubt doing? Um, it's feeling a little bit more irrelevant. Yeah, a yeah. little bit more relevant. Yeah, if you had to give it a number, would it still be 10%? Mm. I don't think so. I think it would be less than 10. Um, I had this like feeling as we were tapping of like, like, yeah, like irrelevant. Like that doesn't need to dictate anything anymore. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. So Kieran, um, just imagining that, you know, when you're done with your cycle, when do you think you'll be done? Um, um, today's Tuesday. I should be done um, and feeling a little bit back to normal, like by Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So ideally you'd like to start breath work that day or when would be a good day for you? Um, Saturday's a good day to start. Yeah. Saturday. Okay. So this Saturday, and then you'll be doing it for committing seven days, um, mm -hmm. twice, a, twice a day. Mm -hmm. And then, so um, how are you feeling if I were to tell you, well, in two, two weeks, I'm going to email you and be like, so how are you doing on that breath work? Did you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, seven days, kind of keeping you accountable. I love that. that. See if that means that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does that make you feel any emotions come up when, when I tell you, like, I'm going to follow up with you to make sure that this actually like went through? Yeah. For one, it's like, oh shit, I better do it. And another, it's like, that feels really nice to have that support. Okay. Right. And that part that was like, oh shit, I better do it. Like, is there any um, resistance to getting it done? Any emotions coming up with sticking to that seven day? No. No. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. All right. Great work on that. Amazing. So um, something that you had mentioned when we were um, tapping was, I will be in pain for the next couple of days. And that was kind of clouding the, the goal setting of that. Um, and you're already starting to feel that pain, that beginning pains. So um, just imagining that your cycle is starting and that it could potentially be painful, what is happening, you know, in your emotional body when you think about that? Um, there's like a major bummer. Major bummer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And because because why is there something that you wanted to do that you don't think you'd be able to do because you're going to be in pain? Um, um, it's, it's like a lot of times that's what it is. There's something that I want to do that I can't do now, but also like last month was a painful one and I just kind of laid around in bed and like, there was nothing I could do. I was just crying and I had taken multiple painkillers. I had tried heat, I had tried castor oil and I was just waiting for the painkillers to kick in. And it was this very lonely, um place to be um just no recourse in pain alone waiting for mm -hmm. it to not feel that way mm -hmm. yeah and just just imagining that could potentially happen again what's coming up for you mm. just um like crying the urge to cry like, I don't know if I have a word like sadness or frustration, but more just like crying makes me want yeah. to cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes you want to cry. And zero to 10 on that, that makes you want to cry feeling. It's like a, like an eight. Yeah. Anywhere in your body you're aware of that feeling, living? I'd say mostly like my throat. Like throat and heart centers. Okay. So heart okay all right side of the hand take a deep breath here good and repeat after me even though even though just imagining that what happened last month just imagining that what happened last month during my cycle during my cycle could potentially happen again this month could potentially happen again this month there was no recourse in pain. There was no recourse for my pain. 
And I was alone. And I was alone. And now I feel the urge to cry. And now I feel the urge to cry. I can feel it in my throat and heart. I can feel it in my throat and heart. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And even though, and even though, just imagining, just imagining that how intense last cycle was, it could happen again. That how intense last, last cycle was could happen again. There was no recourse in pain and I was alone. There was no recourse for the pain and I was alone. And just imagining that that could happen again. I'm just imagining that that could happen again. I feel the urge to cry. I feel the urge to cry. And I can feel it in my throat and heart center. And I can feel it in my throat and heart center. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And even though I can feel this urge to cry. And even though I can feel this urge to cry. In my throat and heart. In my throat and heart. Just imagining. Just imagining. That I could feel how I did last cycle. That I could feel the way I did last cycle. There was no recourse in pain and I was alone. There was no recourse for the pain and I was alone. And I accept that I'm feeling this way right now. And I accept that I'm feeling this way right now. Top of the head. Feeling this urge to cry. Feeling this urge to cry. This urge to cry. This urge to cry. Side of the eye. I can feel it in my throat and heart center. I can feel it in my throat and heart center. This urge to cry. This urge to cry. This urge to cry. This urge to cry. All I have to do is notice this. All I have to do is notice this. This urge to cry. Urge to cry. All I have to do is notice. All I have to do is notice. This urge to cry. This urge to cry. Good. Go ahead and take a deep breath. So just noticing that urge to cry, it was an eight before. Did it go up, down, or stay the same? It went down by probably like a point, like a mile of seven. Um, what I really am enjoying with the tapping is that it creates this like lightness around the things that have, that before tapping feel heavy. And so like, while I can still connect to that feeling, um, it's almost like it has this like um, blanket of like lightness around it that makes it more difficult to feel what I was feeling before because I'm mm. instead feeling this like lightness, which mm -hmm. feels better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, is there anything else that you're aware of? Anything else that you're focusing on, on, um, just that potentially happening again, you know, you're getting your cycle actively. Um, and that thought like it could potentially happen again, it could potentially be intense like that. Still the urge to cry is like a seven, but is there anything else, any other aspect that you're focusing on at that thought? I don't think so. Yeah. Is it the, um, the being in pain part or is it the being alone part? Um, that is something that is like, was one more intense than the other in terms of feeding this like urge to cry? I think maybe the loneliness. Yeah, the loneliness. Mm -hmm. And is that because there's no one else around or no one um, to like help you or how would you describe it? Um, it? It's just this kind of feeling where like when you're feeling that shitty, it would just like be nice to have, um, I guess. So, I mean, a whole different topic, but probably the same topic is um, my relationship history and me trying to work out, you know, my attachment styles and my love languages. And so I'm single for the first time in a really long time. So um, uh, I think 
previously I would have a little bit more support, emotional support around my period or um, a boyfriend to go run and get like the, the hot, the hot water um, thing, me jiggy, um, to make a hot pack or whatever. Um, so yeah, the loneliness is kind of heavy um, mm-hmm. pain now too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zero to 10 on that loneliness. I mean, when I was like, well, what I'm feeling in my body right now with it or. Yeah. It's like an eight. It's like an eight. Anywhere. Do you feel that anywhere in your body? The loneliness. That's like solar plexus and heart. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So side of the hand. Even though. Even though. I'm feeling this loneliness. I'm feeling this loneliness. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. Just imagining that I'm going to be starting my cycle. Just imagining that I'm going to be starting my cycle. And I'm going to be alone. And I'm going to be alone. Because when you're feeling that shitty, it would be nice to have someone there. Because when you're feeling that shitty, it would be nice to have someone there. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack or something. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack or something. And all I have to do is notice this. And all I have to do is notice this. And I accept myself for feeling this way. And I accept myself for feeling this way. And even though I'm feeling this loneliness. And even though I'm feeling this loneliness. In my solar plexus and heart. In my solar plexus and heart. Just imagining that I'm going to have to go through my period alone. Just imagining that I'm going to have to go through my period alone. It would be nice to have someone there. It would be nice to have someone there. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And even though I'm feeling all this loneliness. And even though I'm feeling all this loneliness. At the thought of going through my period alone. At the thought of going through my period alone. Because when you're feeling that shitty, it would be nice to have someone. Because when you're feeling that shitty, it would be nice to have someone. Maybe a boyfriend and he can make a hot pack. Maybe a boyfriend who can make a hot pack. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. And I accept that I'm feeling this way. Top of the head. This loneliness. This loneliness. At the thought of going through my period alone. At the thought of going through my period alone. This loneliness. This loneliness. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. This loneliness. This loneliness. This loneliness in my solar plexus and heart. This loneliness in my solar plexus and heart. Collarbone. This loneliness. This loneliness. Under the arm. This loneliness. This loneliness. Good. And I want you to place one, one hand on your chest and with the other tap in that groove between the fourth and fifth fingers. So it's like San Jiao channel. Perfect. And then go ahead and close your eyes and then open them. And keeping your head stable, I want you to just move your eyes. So move your eyes hard down in one direction, look down and then back to center. And then look um, hard down in the other direction and then back to center. Good. And what I want you to do, keeping your head stable, is moving your eyes in one big circle in one direction, pretending that your nose is like the center of a clock and you want to like see all the the numbers on that clock. Good. And then when you're done moving it in that direction, go in the other direction. Perfect. And back to center. And then hum a few bars of happy birthday. Mm Good. Mm-hmm. And then um, what is 25 plus 4? 29. Good. And then hum a few bars of happy birthday. Mm-hmm. 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 Good. Mm-hmm. Top of the head. This loneliness. This loneliness. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. I can feel it in my solar plexus and heart. This loneliness. This loneliness. This loneliness in my solar plexus and heart. This loneliness in my solar plexus and heart. It would be nice to have someone there. It would be nice to have someone there. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack. Maybe a boyfriend to make a hot pack. This loneliness. This loneliness. At the thought of going through my period alone. At the 
thought of going through my period alone. This loneliness. This loneliness. Good. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And just notice that loneliness that was in your solar plexus and heart. It was an eight before. If you had to give it a number now, what would that be? It's more like a four or a five. Okay. Okay. All right. So now when you think about going through your period alone, what's coming up for you at that thought? Um, well, while we were tapping um, and hearing you phrase this loneliness in my heart and solar plexus, I made me realize, oh, okay, like that is where it lives in the body, um, my body. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, the way I um, create meaning in my life, I really like the chakra systems. So thinking about the solar plexus and how that's forward movement in life and heart, that's love. And just thinking that if I have a loneliness that lives in those centers, that kind of maybe means that I don't feel like I can move forward without um, someone else, or I feel like I, I can't feel love without someone else. And so that's actually a huge, um, that feels like a breakthrough for someone like me who deals with codependence, um, to just have it phrased that way and to tap through it. Like I can move forward without someone else and I can feel love um, just on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some ways that you can feel love just on your own? Like in, in any, any routines, like you mentioned breath work, what else are some things that you can do for yourself? I think any time that um, I am investing in myself and devoting myself to myself. Um, so whether that is self-care, like um, going and getting acupuncture or massage or signing up for tapping with you, or if it's going and working out, or if it's cooking a nice meal or maybe even eating junk food if I needed it that day, just tuning into me and um, being compassionate and um, uh, accepting of myself in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Major breakthrough. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, incredible. Okay. So we're nearing the end here and I just want to wrap up nicely um, and honor the, all the work that you've done. So um, where would you like to put things that are still a work in progress? Like we left off this loneliness with being around a four or five. So there's still some work to do there, right? As well as some other things that we mentioned earlier in the session. So all those things where would you like to put things that are work in progress outside of your body in a container where it's safe and you're safe, you know, you can use your imagination. Um, maybe like a little message in a bottle that's adrift in, in, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Okay. And anything special about that bottle, any colors, like what it, what does it look like? Um, glass and uh, maybe a barnacle or two growing on it <laughs> <laughs> okay okay all right so side of the hand even though even though I still have some work to do I still have some work to do but I'm choosing to put all of that stuff but I'm choosing to put all of that stuff um, like a message in a bottle like a message in a bottle. That blue glass bottle. That blue glass bottle. With a barnacle or two on it. With a barnacle or two on it. And it's adrift in the ocean. And it's adrift in the ocean. And even though. And even though. I may still have some work to do. I may still have some work to do. There's still some progress to be made on some issues. There's still some progress to be made on some issues. But I'm choosing to put all of that but I'm choosing to put all of that into that blue glass bottle into that blue glass bottle and set it free in the ocean and set it free in the ocean. And even though, and even though I know that there's still some things I could work on, I know that there's still some things I can work on, but I'm choosing to put that stuff into that bottle, but I'm choosing to put that stuff into that bottle, that blue glass bottle with a barnacle or two on it, that blue glass bottle with a barnacle or two on it, and set it adrift in the ocean. And set it adrift in the ocean. Top of the head. I'm choosing to put all that stuff in that bottle. I'm choosing to put all that stuff in that bottle. 
I'm choosing to honor the progress that I just made. I'm choosing to honor the progress that I just made. Said of the eye. I made a lot of progress. I made a lot of progress. I made a lot of insights. I made a lot of insights. I think I might be able to commit to a seven day routine of breath work. I think I can commit to a seven day routine of breath work. And that's really exciting. And that's really exciting. And I realize that I can love myself. And I realize that I can love myself. And there are ways that I can do that. And there are ways that I can do that. I can work out. I can work out. I can cook a nice meal. I can cook a nice meal. Or I can even eat junk food if that's what I want. Or I can even eat junk food if that's what I want. And I choose to be compassionate with myself. And I choose to be compassionate with myself. I choose to honor my body. I choose to honor my body. And I choose to send love and gratitude to my body. And I choose to send love and gratitude to my body. And all of those things that are in that bottle. And all of the things that are in that bottle. I know that they're there. I know that they're there. And I'll come back to them when I'm ready. And I'll come back to them when I'm ready. I'm not abandoning them. I'm not abandoning them. I know that they represent a lot of healing. I know that they represent a lot of healing. But I'm choosing to focus on the progress I just made. But I'm choosing to focus on the progress I just made. Yeah. And what else do you choose, Kieran? Mm. I'm choosing to... Um, be an acceptance of myself and bring that compassion to myself and feel good after this session and um, enjoy that kind of fluffy lightness that I feel from what we've been doing and not get caught up in uh, what remains as a perfectionist, which I might be want to do, but instead just enjoy the insights that we uh, found today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just enjoy. So go ahead and take a deep breath and just draw your awareness down into your feet and just notice everything about them.